Alrighty, so today we are going to be looking at some of the tw the twenty craziest movie fan theories that will have you rethinking everything. First of all, we have the movie Titanic. Everyone knows this iconic James Cameron movie inspired by the ill-fated voyage of the Titanic in the early 20th century. The romantic story of Rose and Jack did earn the movie 11 Academy Award wins, after all. But did you know, also know, there's a particularly wild theory about none other than the film's swoon-worthy protagonist, Jack Dawson. Ooh, but, but what is it? Theory, Jack Dawson is a time traveler. Um, according to pro, according to a popular fan theory, Jack is actually from the future, and only boards the Titanic to save Rose's life. And there's plenty of evidence to prove it. The most obvious clue is that Jack mentions Lake Wasoto. As a lake he once fished in, as well as a roller coaster at Santa Monica Pier. Except that both of these sites didn't exist until years later, after the Titanic sank in 1912. Need more evidence? Just take a look at Jack's out of place hairstyle and fashion for the time period, including a rucksack he's seen carrying. It actually wasn't popular until the 1930s. Wow. Just straight up. Wow. M moving along. Aw, uh, Finding Nemo. The plot of this fan-favorite children's movie seems innocent enough. A clownfish father, Marlin, sets on a journey across the sea to find his only son, because remember, if you've seen the movie, spoiler alert, if you didn't, the mother at, the mother and all of their babies die, except for Nemo. Theory, Nemo doesn't actually exist. Like I said, the film's opening scene, Marlin wakes up from a bar barracuda attack on his family to find that only one of his eggs, Nemo, survived. But one theory suggests that the grieving family only um the grieving father only imagined that one son survived, which means that Nemo actually isn't real, but it is only a figment of Marlin's imagination conjured up to cope. With the loss of his family. Following this theory, the entire movie is an allegory of his father's journey through the five stages of grief, as many fans suggest. And the kicker, Nemo actually means nobody in Latin. And we have the movie Grease. Grease is everyone's favorite musical film. <laughs> Not mine. It has everything from great costumes, <laughs> no it doesn't, to lovable characters, m maybe. Plus a ton of really fun musical numbers. But there's one particular theory that definitely puts a darker tone to this charming movie about a high school romance. Can you guess what it is? Is someone secretly like dead or something? I don't know. Sandy dies at the beginning of the movie. The key to this theory is both at the beginning and end of the film. Grease opens with Sandy and Danny meeting at the beach and ends with the final shot of the couple driving up toward the skies in a flying car.
while one dark fan theory posits that Sandy actually drowned at the beach, and the entire movie is just a fantasy sequence playing in Sandy's head as she dies, with the last scene in the car signifying Sandy being sent up to heaven. Wow. Just wow. Alright, aw, oh, Batman, the Dark Knight. There's one thing every superhero fanatic remembers from this iconic Batman film from 2008. It's Heath Ledger's legendary performance as the Joker that earned him a posthumous Oscar. With a character as complex as the Joker, though, there are, of course, a lot of con theories as to how he became one of the best fictional supervillains. For example, okay, this literally doesn't make any sense, but it says the theory is that the Joker is an Iraq war veteran. <sighs> Many Batman fans have speculated about the Joker's origin story. But no theory has been as compelling as the one that suggests that the villain was a former soldier in the Iraq War who was suffering from PTSD. This not only explains his facial scarring and his extensive knowledge of explosives and firearms, but also suggests a deeper insight into his madness and tortured psyche. In one scene, for example, the Joker mentions rather bitterly in one scene that no one would bat an eye if a truckload of soldiers got blown up. Could it be that his disgust stems from his status as a disgruntled and mentally balanced war? I don't know. But we now have Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, comment down below that you, if you've seen it, but oh well. If you loved 80s movies, you might remember this iconic John Hughes teen comedy about a high school senior who decides to play hooky from school doesn't everyone but have you ever thought about how in spite of the title the movie's emotional core actually relies not on the titler ferris bueller but his best buddy cameron Because, a theory, as a theory says, Ferris is a figment of Cameron's imagination. Okay, no, no, and no. According to one long-standing theory about the classic teen flick, the character of Ferris doesn't actually exist, but it is actually a hallucinatory embodiment made up in Cameron's head. This all makes sense given the contrast between the confident, popular Ferris and the awkward, self-despising Cameron. Ferris is the kind of guy who Cameron wants to be. If we follow this premise, the adventures that take place in the movies are actually figments of Cameron's imagination conjured up in his head as he lives out his dreams through his imaginary friend, Ferris. Wow. Wow. Really? Really? Ah, uh, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Best movie ever. Just saying. But only the original one. Not the new crappy Johnny... What, yeah, that one. Everyone knows this iconic movie based on the famous children's story by Ronald Dahl. 
an eccentric chocolatier, decides to give out golden tickets. Though I've always found Mr. Willy Wonka a little creepy. Like. But he, anyways, he gives out these golden tickets for five lucky children for an exclusive tour of his chocolate factory. But have you ever wondered if there's more to the mysterious character in Willy Wonka than meets the eye? Well, Willy Wonka is a serial killer. If you ever thought there was something a little creepy about this sugary tale, you're not alone. Many people have speculated that Willy Wonka is actually a calculated murderer who takes delight in luring the children into his factory, planning out each of their demises as part of a saw, a saw scheme. This explains why Wonka is completely unfazed by their variant. accidents through the film, and also why the Oompa Loompas are already re ready with a pre-prepared song and dance routine as each child faces their fate. Ah, uh, alright, my absolute favorite Harry Potter series. Before we begin, I guess some of you know that I do in fact have a Harry Potter channel called Hufflepuff King and if you know th that Hufflepuff is a Harry Potter house in case you want to know what my Harry Potter house is it is Hufflepuff so Hufflepuff King and we've only posted two videos on there. But there's actually going to be more coming. So that's that. And now back to the conspiracy theories. With an epic story spanning seven books and eight movies. And plenty of spinoff franchises too. <laughs> Fantastic Beast. Stuff like that. It is no surprise that the Harry Potter series invites a lot of fan speculation about its magical world. But this one in particular theories involves not wizards, but instead one well-known family of muggles. And we're talking about the theory that the Dursleys are cruel to Harry for a good reason. How is it a good reason? Any Potterhead remembers how unkind the Dursleys were to Harry, and they were throughout the series. But what if they were? There was a good reason for it. According to one theory, the reason that Harry's aunt, uncle, and cousin were so awful to him, because Harry, spoiler alert, was one of Voldemort's Horcruxes. As we know, Horcruxes negatively impact their surroundings, such as when Harry's, Ron's, and Hermione's moods were affected by the Slytherin locket they took turns wearing in Deathly Hallows. Since Harry was a Horcrux, it definitely would make sense that he'd negatively affect the people he lived with for so many years, wouldn't it? The James Bond series. Perhaps the best most well-known spy film franchise. The most recent reboot of the James Bond series has Daniel Craig portraying the famous M16 agent, with a total of six different actors having played 007 since 1962. The biggest question from the franchise Regards the continuity of the different film, how can the same Bond be forever young as decades pass? Whoa. Theory. James Bond is actually just a code name. That could work.
I mean, I think that might be it. To explain the continuity problem of the Bond franchise, a popular theory suggests that James Bond is not a single singular person, but is actually just a code name that's given to multiple M16 agents over the years. This would certainly certainly explain why the character's appearance, age, and even personality have all changed over the past 50 years, and why he never ages or dies after so many dangerous missions. Furthermore, the theory would also explain why the agent loves to flaunt his name to his enemies despite the obvious threat is because James Bond isn't actually his real name. Ah, uh, Aladdin. Aladdin is another one of those classic children's films that seem pretty straightforward. A poor street urchin stumbles upon a magic lamp, grants him three wishes. And there's a theory about the um, genie. And the genie... And apparently the movie is set in a post-apocalyptic future now i'm a little tired of reading so we're just gonna cut it out so basically they think ever wonder what how genie made so many pop culture references like that spot on arnold arnold schwarzenegger impression despite having been locked up in the lamp for ten thousand years One hypothesis suggests that actually Aladdin isn't set in the past, but set, but actually set in a post-apocalyptic future. Wow. Pulp fiction. Arguably, arguably one of the most influential movies of the 90s. This cult classic crime film from Quentin Tarantino details several interconnected stories of criminal LA and subsequently can't help but invite a lot of fan speculation, particularly regarding the contents of one particular, particular briefcase sought by the film's main characters. The theory is that the briefcase contains Marcellus Wallace's soul. The contents of the case in one of the Pulp Fiction's most enduring mysteries, but there's one popular theory that puts the much debated topic to rest. Many fans theorize that the briefcase retrieved by the hitmen contains the soul of their gank disturbed boss who had previously sold his soul to the devil just recall the lock code to the case 666 a number famously associated with the devil and the bandage on the back of marcellus's head which correlates to the biblical text that says the devil steals your soul from the back of your head Iron Man 2. For sake of time, we're just going to look at the theories. But, you know. But, that the theory is that Peter Parker is the little kid in the mask. That's right. Many Marvel fans have long speculated that the little kid behind the mask that Iron Man saved at the Stark Expo is none other than Spider-Man's Peter Parker. Never mind that Spider-Man didn't officially enter the MCU until 2016. We all know that there is one... There was a giant science in his hometown, neighborhood of Queens. Young Peter
would definitely find a way to be there. And now we got Home Alone. You remember the movie where they leave him a home for Christmas? How you forget your kid, I don't know, but they did. The theory is that Kevin grows up to be Jigsaw from the Saw franchise. According to one theory, Home Alone is the origin story of the serial killer Jigsaw, otherwise known as John Kramer, from the Saw horror movies. Proponents of this theory point to the numerous connections linking Kevin to Jigsaw, including a nearly identical appearance violent tendencies, and a similar knack for booby traps. Still not convinced? Think about how Kevin's feared childhood basement seemed to be recreated in Saw 2. One scene in particular recreate. Kevin hallucinates the furnace as a monster, which very well might have inspired his act of burning someone alive in a furnace as Jigsaw later on. We have Inception. And Cobb's real totem was his wedding ring. The much debated ending of... Inception revolves around the spinning top that Cobb uses a totem, which is an object that dreamers use to distinguish between reality And dreams. But what if Cobb's totem wasn't the top at all? Instead of the top, one fan theory suggests that Cobb's true totem is actually his wedding ring. After all, he's seen wearing the ring in every sequence in which he's a dream, but not when he's awake. This would definitely solve the big movie's biggest mystery of whether Cobb is awake at the ending. He is, as his wedding ring is clearly absent in the very last scene of the Toy Story series. Sid grows up, you, you remember Sid, you know, this kid who tortured his toys, he had like the, yeah, you know, well, he, there's a theory that says he grew up to be this guy, the garbage man in Toy Story 3. Look, they eat, they're, look, they're literally wearing the same sh shirt, like, how? The Shining. Ooh. I, I've never seen the movie, but I've read the book, and it's, like, really, really creepy. Okay, I don't, like, I don't know what's more scary, him or her. Literally don't know. But anyways, the movie is about faking the moon landing. How is it? This movie had nothing to even do with moon landings really no consider the evidence the film changes the haunted row tells room number to 237 originally 217 in the novel because the average distance from the earth to the moon is 237 thousand miles it also changes the book's single slain child into these creepy twins as a nod to Na NASA's Gemini program. An even more hurt from the same scene, Danny's sweater features a rocket labeled Apollo 11. Okay, that doesn't mean anything. But we've got the Wizard of Oz, you know, we're off to see the wizard. Yeah, that one. Dorothy is the Wicked Witch of the East. No, she's not. What if Dorothy's time in Oz wasn't a dream at all, but an alternate reality, based on the fact 
nearly every major figure Dorothy meets in Oz has a counterpart in her real life from Kansas. One wild fan theory suggests that Dorothy also had a parallel counterpart in the alternate reality, and it's none other than the Wicked Witch of the East. Uh, no it's not. Just think about how we never see the face of the Wicked Witch of the East before she conveniently gets crushed by Dorothy's house. Now, strangely, the only thing we know about her is that she and Dorothy have the same shoe size. Coincidence? Uh, yeah. Many fans certainly don't think so. Well, I do, and I'm calling Cap on this one. Fight Club. The narrator and Tyler are grown-up Calvin and Hobbes. Okay, just one question. Which one's the human and which one's the tiger? I want to know. Comment down below. Sure, according to this, to this hypothesis, a young Calvin who used to create an imaginary friend out of a stuffed tiger... grows up to be none other than the narrator who reimagines his childhood friend as Tyler. The roots of their secret they have men's only fight club, the exclusive boys only club in Calvin and Hobbes. Monsters Inc. The monsters are scared of the Black Death. Okay, okay. I can. I really don't see what how how this is coming along, but let's see. Given the advanced tech of the Monsters Inc. world, it's safe to assume that the narrators have been traveling to the human world for a long time. One like say like since the Middle Ages, one fan theory suggests that the first time the monsters made contact with the human world was during the time of the Black Death. That's why the monsters are terrified of contact with humans to this day. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, that could be true. I'm definitely not calling Cap on this one. Because this one might actually be the case. Random, but it could be the case. You know, it's I literally just watched this movie yesterday. We're talking about Back to the Future. Doc Brown was suicidal. That's depressing. Ever wonder why in one scene, Doc Brown, after... Talking about that his inventions never work, puts himself directly in the path of the speeding DeLorean as he tests his time machine invention in the parking lot. While some fans speculate that Doc was actually ready to give it all up, including his own life. This particularly dark theory po posits that Doc was depressed from his failures as an inventor and had chosen to take his life though another, through another one of his inventions that he expected to fail. But there's one other detail that makes the hypothesis even darker. Doc grabs Marty when he tries to run in that same scene leading fans to believe that it was actually a murder-suicide attempt. Yeah, no, d yeah, no, Doc, thank you. Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg's an iconic film about dinosaurs. The dinosaurs aren't actually real. Well, duh. Dinosaurs went extinct 
65 million years ago. According to one theory that posits that the dinosaurs aren't real, Jurassic Park is actually an elaborate scheme of park creator John Hammond to make profit from a deceptive spectacle. In other words, he created the dinosaurs from a mix of existing animal DNA into what people think they might look like. Not convinced? Just recall Hammond's speech about how he started his career with a flea circus designed to trick children, which certainly suggests that he has no problem earning his fortune on selling people false realities. Plus, the theory would definitely explain... Why the park's dinosaurs are pretty historically inaccurate. None of them had feathers and many weren't the correct size. Wow. Just. Wow. Anyways, that is it for reacting to crazy movie fan theories. Hope you enjoyed. Comment down below which one was your favorite. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and make sure your notifications are clicked to all, not personalized, and I'll see you tomorrow.